I go to the homebrew store and I noticed that the most expensive ingredient in my shopping cart was the hops. I was making IPAs, really, you know, flavor forward IPAs. And so I sort of, the gears start turning and I'm thinking, well, if I can engineer yeast to make biofuels, surely I should be able to engineer it to make the flavors that ordinarily come from hops. So that was kind of the light bulb moment for me. Went back to the lab. This is all while I'm, you know, during the day engineering yeast to make biofuels and um but you know nights and weekends start to whip up some prototypes and the prototypes were really encouraging and so finally i you know this is all under the radar but finally i kind of work up the courage to tell my mentor you know hey i've got this kind of wacky side project idea he suggested hey you should go you should go to a brewing conference start you know see if there are people out there that are interested in this you know, I had always thought that I was going to be an academic, um, but here I am. It's like a pretty cool idea for a startup. So just to be clear, the original intention of the company was to be able to uh, brew beer that had, the, that had aromatic qualities associated with hops, yeah. but didn't need the hops. Yeah, yeah. We actually published a really nice research article with my old uh, professor. We brewed a beer um, actually with a, a professor of brewing science at UC Davis, a guy named Charlie Bamforth, who I'm sure you've heard mm -hmm. of. And uh, and the control was just a regular traditional yeast. And the experiment was, you know, it was bioengineered yeast to produce some of the, like you said, the aromatics that ordinarily you get from hops. And we did a double blind tasting uh, over at a brewery called Lagunitas, uh, which is just north, you know, I don't know, 60 miles north of here. Um, yeah, and we got these results back showing that, yeah, indeed, we can get yeast to make hop flavor without needing to add hops to the beer.